we are from Brazil, as Rafael said. We are from Manaus, actually, in the middle of the jungle. So we make games there. Uh, okay, so let's start talking about Gear VR. Um, who has a chance to use Gear VR here? Oh, a lot of people. <laughs> so for the for who doesn't, uh, that's the Gear VR. Uh, Gear VR have two versions. Uh, the first one works with Note 4, and the second one uh, works with S6. So the the two devices here have a really good resolution and super AMOLED screen. That means it's uh, really good graphics and pixels for us. That's the res resolution for each eye that you can use. We also have a trackpad on side, so you can interact with the uh, the objects. Uh, and the most important thing, you can show your road or uh, in, in everywhere. You don't need any cables, and, and you, you can show in everywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's remember, uh, Gear VR, it's Samsung powered. Uh, you can make real good words, and you can show everywhere. So let's talk about our challenger here, which was Jax, our, our friend here. So, why it was a challenge? We want to make a, a demo, a technical art demo, to see where we could go in terms of art and programming. So we did a lot of concepts for, for this character. Uh, we want to, to make a silhouette and contrast this art style, so we chose the Rococo art style. And also, it was a mysterious and elegant gameplay. So uh, we want to make to people be amazed by uh, the world we created. So when we start to development with uh, with Gear VR, where we want the discovery what is the triple A uh, graphics for Gear VR. Uh, we also want uh, six frames per second and the less latency possible. Uh, of all that, for have the best immerse possible. So is that we we want on the beginning? So let's start, Jack. Okay. So I will show you how we can start to develop an Earth gear. Uh, you can start with Unit. Unit five uh, have native support on the last updated. But if you are using Unit 4, you're going to need a SDK support. So uh, you can get the, your SDK on Oculus site. Just download it and unpackage it, and you'll be ready to, to start your development. After you download and unpackage it, uh, you should read the documentation. Uh, there you have a lot of things to, to set up on your project. But I would ju just say the two uh, things most, most important here. You need an Android project because you're building for an uh, Android device. And you also need to uh, put force landscape left because that the orientation that the device works on gear. After you, you, you made that, you just go on your scene uh, and you can f look for these two prefabs. Just drag and drop on the scene and you can play and you see uh, the magic happen. So I'll just show you real quick here. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, here. So I have Jax here and I have my prefab here. I don't know if you are reading. Just uh, that prefab that I show you. When I play here, uh, okay. That's way. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> okay, uh, I can show you on the on the end of the presentation. I have another another project, but yeah, <laughs> is that? I will show you on the end. So okay, for us. <laughs> so you, you just need that to make Jacques uh, work. Okay, <laughs> that great, break my leg. <laughs> uh, okay. So. As Jack is another world, he's inside Gear VR, we had to uh, make up, uh, we found issues in communication. Uh, like, he needs to communicate to this new world, as he couldn't. Uh, in user interaction, uh, user interface in VR is really different from mobile. So we had to, we faced challenges and we made up solutions for it. Um, that solutions we found was good, for, good enough for us, but maybe in the game you guys will produce won't necessarily be the same. 
So the first thing is there is no general consensus on user interface. There is no manual on Google telling you what are the what you should do, what you should not do. So what we did was to test a lot. We did a lot of prototypes, we tested a lot of, with a lot of people, a lot of positions, a lot of huts. So the first issue we found was motion sickness. Motion sickness happens when we are standing still and everything around you is moving. It's the same feeling you get when you are in the back seat of a car and you are looking on your phone or read something and you start feeling sick. That's motion sickness. So what we did was to place someone, uh, the player inside the scene and looking around everything. So he could control his camera, which didn't get him sick. Um, the other issue we found was claustrophobia. We made uh, some prototypes that we placed assets around the player, like this, but it was too big and too close to him. So people were complaining and feeling suffocated and discomfort about it. So what we did was uh, space it out, uh, the assets, and we did a tool that enabled us to test it really fast. I will show you. <laughs> It's like this, uh, control the distance from the camera, the angle, and the height. Always facing the camera. So that enables us to test really quick and less effort. The other thing we found was the player getting lost. We did have feedbacks. We have an aim that passed through the assets. But it was not enough. People were complaining that we were lost. They didn't know where to look or where to tap. So what we did was make the colliders bigger. Colliders are the interactable area, uh, the green one, like, like that. And when the aim passed through the collider, it got bigger faster. So it made the player realize where he was and where to go. And also we had a lot of feedbacks to make sure it was OK, like audio feedback, animation, and that all, that all made us uh, prototype better experience to avoid discomfort. And feedback was really important to make our immersion much better. OK, here comes more challenges and solutions. But why? You look, uh, Jack sat there, so we decided to, to get Jack happy. So we put more frames for, her, for him. And we put a new world on VR too. So it means that we have a lot of things uh, being drawn on, on VR. And we discovered one thing, that the device got hot. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when we have a lot of things and it's not op op optimized. The first thing that we, we made for um, fix that issue was uh, exactly that, put on the freezer. <laughs> it's really. <laughs> But it's obvious it's not the right solution. <laughs> so what do you, you, you can do? Uh, you need to optimize your game. So to start to optimize, I'll just uh, give you a few steps here, uh, uh, not go uh, too, deaf, too deep. So profile your application. Uh, look for your bottleneck. Look uh, where your application is uh, getting more time to process. So you're going to have some idea what you should do. Uh, you can also look at uh, the draw calls. For who doesn't know what is draw calls, draw calls is it's how many times the, the device used to paint the screen uh, to get just one frame. So it happened more or less like that. Uh, and one good pra practice on VR is maintain your draw calls up to 100. It's not mandatory, you can put more, but to start and make sure it not, nothing, nothing is, is wrong, you can use uh, up to 100. Uh, another thing that you use, use it on our project uh, is the level of anti-aliasing. Uh, you can see the jagging there. So if you're in using anti-aliasing uh, on the maximum level on 80, it, I don't have any jagging there, so it's smoother, but it's, uh, it's getting a lot of processing. So we decided to use just uh, two levels of uh, anti-aliasing. It's not that good, it's not good uh, as the level 8, but it works for us. Uh, the character is not that big on screen, so we can, can work with that. Uh, 
Another thing that you can use just on VR, uh, it's a synchronous time, time warp. But what is exactly is that? I can try to define it in just one phrase here. Uh, use the last image in buffer to handle. But it's kind of complicated too. Uh, what is that? I will try to explain in a few steps here what is that. So let's suppose that you are getting an application and you, you have one frame here. So you are looking in front of you and the, the image is processing time and you have the transformation for VR. They look more or less like, like that. So uh, let's suppose that you decide to turn your neck to the right, look to the right. Uh, the second frame here, you look like that and let's suppose that it's fine and you get on time and you have the transformation for that too. So on the next one, uh, let's suppose that image there don't exist and you don't get on time. What happened here? Uh, I will get the last image, this is the second one in that, in that case, and I use on the new frame to make the transformation. So it's the same, the same image in there, uh, and I will try to make some transla uh, translation uh, simulation simulating the, the neck view. So you do like a little movement like this, and I apply the, the transformation for VR. We look like uh, pretty good, but some some cases you can have that kind of problems there. Uh, a black border, it's not red, uh, just to, to show. So if your application is running well, uh, it will help you. You don't have any latency, any or less latency. Another thing you can use to on VR, uh, monoscopic. Uh, but what is that? You have two images being rendered on the same time. I have the first image and the second one. So when you use that that thing, uh, you remove the second image and use the first one uh, duplicated. Uh, the depth sensation will be less than the other one, but it's still working. Uh, you can try and, fee and see if it works for your games. Uh, that will drop your draw calls too. Uh, okay, but where can I find this on unit? On my prefab that broke now. Uh, you can find here uh, the anti-alias. Uh, you can find time warp, uh, and you can find monoscopic too. So let's try to see again on unit. Uh, okay, that's our project here. Let's see. Oh. One, two. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, nice. No, I will open again. <laughs> you know a joke? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just a moment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's try one more. I hope that works. <laughs> oh, okay, that works. <laughs> so yeah, you can see the, the two eyes here. And you can see also, I don't know if you, are, you can read there, the draw calls of that scene. It's 150, uh, but it, our game, it's running in smooth. So I can use more draw calls too. Uh, the other scene that I show you, it's almost the same. Uh, I will show here just uh, where is, is my, uh, my prefab. And uh, here I can change the levels and just click in, on Dropbox here to change my, my option. Uh, so, okay. Remember, optimize your game for VR. Uh, you need to, that need, need to run really smooth because you have a lot of problems like Gabby say. So, you, and use the solutions for, of, of Oculus and it will, it will help you. So, uh, what's virtual reality from Samsung? It's a unique creation, you can create beautiful worlds here. It's a new technology worth trying. And although there were challenges, we need to push forward and that was a pretty awesome project for us. And you can visit us at our kiosk at Rococo VR and Samsung Kiosk. If you are starting to, to develop for VR, 
uh, you're going to have a lot of challenges, and I, ha I hope that wha what we try to, to say here uh, help you. Uh, okay. <laughs> and what we learned, just, 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 what we learned, we have more coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, Pay attention next to you tonight. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and yeah, that's Thanks. it, I think. Thanks for <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>